So at this point, it perhaps be appropriate if I share some of my own personal background. From quite an early age, when I, when I was in about junior high, high school, I first became aware of Rudolf Steiner. Uh, it took a while for it to really sink in, uh, but by about 19... 71 or two, I was helping a friend of mine start a biodynamic farm out west of uh, East Lansing. And uh, biodynamic gardening is based on the work of Rudolf Steiner, and uh, it's based on putting life back into the soil and developing tremendously wholesome food. So parallel with my studies in all this has been an interest in natural healing and, and all of those various types of disciplines. So for a great many years, I continued on and I worked in various uh, health food stores and restaurants and all of that uh, throughout the 1970s, uh, deepening my knowledge of such things. Then uh, about the late 70s, I became the manager of the Mayflower Bookshop uh, near Detroit, Michigan. Uh, the Mayflower Bookshop is the largest alternative and holistic bookstore in the world. Uh, and we were able to provide people with learning uh, tools, books, and various uh, sundry interesting things that could uh, help them on their paths toward their unfoldment, whether they were studying health history or uh, metaphysics, meditation, all the various disciplines. So I've studied most of them, and I am fortunate that I've been able to have mentors in various traditions uh, throughout the years. And many of my best friends uh, were in their 70s or 80s back then. So uh, it, it enabled me to have a relationship to traditions that really spanned the, the 20th century on into the 19th century. And it's really quite fascinating. But one of the most significant aspects of that whole journey was my association with the uh, Waldorf teacher training program that was, uh, it, it took place at that time in Southfield and and some very, very interesting people were in charge of that program. There was uh, Werner Gloss, who was the director of the program, and he was a, a direct student of Walter Johannes Stein, the famous Grail researcher. And then there was Hans Gebert, who was a physicist. And then there was uh, Frank, uh, Ralph Marinelli. And I worked with Ralph on... Uh, developing a new model of the function of the heart, the vortex momenta model. But that's a whole other story we'll get to at another time. But in coming to, to find the center of my personal path, it eventually led to things that approached me when I was very young in childhood that rang a bell for me, and that was the grail tradition itself. And I found that as I moved on through life, eventually a great many books became uh, very popular. There was movies made, and, and uh, a great many people were attempting to come to terms with understanding what the grail means as a tradition, as a path of spiritual unfoldment. And it really is a path that's accessible to anybody. As I said in my previous video, uh, we're all fools. And so consequently, anybody could follow the path of Parsifal because he's the pure fool. He's on a quest to improve his questions and to create a context whereby he's capable of receiving whatever it is that the grail is uh, meant to bring. And uh, the real question, of course, being whom does the grail serve?